Hi everybody, welcome back. Hope you are all safe and well. Now, long-term subscribers to this channel will remember that I installed and created some fans that fitted into the back of the fridge to enhance and really encourage the cooling at the back of the fridge. You see, in hot weather conditions, the fridge really doesn't work very well. And in our lunar caravan, it was really quite poor. So I created a wooden frame and installed some fans into it and it managed to create a circulation of air and it worked really well. In our very last holiday I just quickly showed how it was working and it was brilliant. It did do the job and it helped the fridge work brilliantly in the very hot summer that we had. There was of course a number of issues with it. It was just a bodge and I want to create a new version for this Bailey caravan and in this iteration I want to address the following points. I want a permanent solution with no dangling of cables, a safe installation with no chance of fingers getting caught, I want a system that can automatically switch on when it's needed, and a system that can react to the hotter conditions. So those are just some of the points I wanted to address in that design, and here is my Mark II. This is the new version. And to really understand what I've got here in my hands, let me go through my design with you in more detail. Now don't worry if some of this looks a bit complicated, I'll explain a bit more later in the video. But to begin with, we need power, and we are taking 12 volts from behind the fridge. You'll see all of this later in the installation. The first component is an inline on-off switch. This will isolate the new system completely, and it's useful for winter or when I simply don't want it to run. Next in line is a thermal switch. This is installed on the condenser tube at the back of the fridge and will activate when the switch reaches a specific temperature. In this instance, I've chosen a 50 degree normally open thermal switch. Next up is the fan controller. This is an inexpensive board that controls the fan speed based upon the temperature it senses. It increases the fan speed the hotter the sensor gets, and these temperatures are configurable to suit any situation. For a more detailed explanation, I created a video some time ago giving a full tour of this device on my second channel. The link is in the video description. And finally, the fan. And unlike my previous installation, I've chosen a four pin computer fan that speed can be varied by the controller. The magic phrase here is PWM, or pulse width modulation. Any four pin computer fan will work, but look for ones with a high RPM. All these items and where to buy them are listed in the video description below, and I've also put together a handy installation blog as well. Right, and that's my design in its entirety. It's pretty simple, I'm sure you'll agree, but you can make something even simpler. You can just use a thermal switch and just the fan, and that will work really well. In fact, the official kits that you can buy from Dometic and Thetford are basically that, but we won't be paying anywhere near the prices that they charge for theirs. So, for you to understand exactly how we got this far, let's just go through how I built it up. The mountain plate is made up from aluminium and it measures 200 by 100 mil. It's 1.5 millimeter thick and this will be mounted to the back of the fridge using some very strong double-sided tape. The size of the aluminium is not important, but I want a large surface area to hold it all in place. I've drilled two holes about 150 mil apart to mount the fan. I've wrapped the power cable around the fan housing to remove as much slack as possible and then the fan is mounted to the aluminium plate with a metal strip and secured using two M4 countersink bolts and this holds it really tight, there's no need for any glue here. The fan controller is going to be mounted in the top corner and it's fitted here to get the thermocouple as close to the cooling vanes on the fridge as possible. This is affixed to the aluminium using some more of that double sided tape. I've also attached some small clips to the aluminium to help with the cable management. A top tip though, if you're sticking anything to the aluminium, make sure you degrease it first and it gives the adhesive a chance to stick fully. Then it's just a case of soldering the thermal switch in line with the controller. And I'm using some heat shrink here to isolate the solder joints. And once it's all connected, I just screw into the controller, the switch and the power cable. Right, so that's everything you need to know. Uh, I have installed the controller onto the board there with some adhesive tape, and I've also lined the back there, again, with number plate adhesive tape, so it's ready for us to go and install. So let's go and do that right now. So there are three things to install here, the main fan assembly, the thermal switch, and then finally, all the wiring. So to begin, let's start with the fan assembly. Getting this into position is a bit of a juggling act, so I'm having a test run here without the sticky tape revealed just so I know my route in and make sure I can fit it correctly. As you can see by rotating it and moving it behind the cooling vanes, the fan fits snugly. And now it's time to peel back the tape and go for it. 
The tape wants to stick to everything, so take your time and try your hardest not to touch anything. And that's it, it's installed. It's really secure, and as you can see, the fan fits below the lip of the top vent, which means it will drag air in from the bottom vent, complementing the thermal design of the fridge. So now it's time to fit the thermal switch. To better explain what a thermal switch is, let's think of a normal switch on the wall. In its open or off state, the metal contacts are physically not touching. When the switch is pressed, the metal contacts are pushed together, allowing the flow of electrons to pass through and switch on the device. Our thermal switch does exactly the same thing, but instead of my finger pressing the switch, temperature operates the contacts for us. Thermal switches come in two varieties, normally open and normally closed. And we need a switch which is normally open until it reaches the specific temperature. In my case, it's 50 degrees. So at that temperature, the contacts close and like our light switch, allow the electrons to flow and switch on the device. Now, if you're wondering what you're looking at, well, I've rigged up the thermal switch to a glass and poured in boiling hot water. When the switch reaches 50 degrees, it switches on the fan. And as you can see, nothing is happening, but as soon as the temperature rises on the surface of the glass, the fan will be switched on. Now fitting the thermal switch is dead easy. We're going to attach this to the rear of the fridge between the gaps of the finned pipework. If your Dometic fridge is different in design, don't worry, search for the official installation instructions of the official kit, and that will give you an idea on where to place the thermal switch. I've modified the switch by bending the wings, and this makes it far easier to fit around the pipe. And I'm securing the switch in place with two cable ties around the pipework and the switch. Once in, the wires are installed and they run down straight into the controller. And finally, the wiring. Unlike my first version where I ran a cable out of the kitchen window, I need to find a suitable power source from behind the fridge and to make it a permanent installation. Thankfully, there is a fused 12 volt supply that supplies the fridge. To tap into the 12 volt supply, I'm using these Scotch connectors. They splice into the cable and allow me to add a spade terminal. It's a great solution and one that I can remove later on if I want to. In this instance, the green wire is 12 volts, the white wire is the ground. The connectors simply squeeze onto the cable to make a suitable T connection. On some wire, I've connected the main 12 volt switch, which I will cable tie onto the various cables that are bundled at the bottom of the fridge. From here, I run the cable up to the top vent, along with all the other cabling which is already in place, and I've just cable tied this wire with the existing loom to make it nice and neat and out of the way. Just to test that everything is working well, I have a spare fan and a spare controller, and hooking up to the 12 volt power source, you can see that's all working fine. So with the cables now run in, everything is installed, we need to test it, and make sure that the fans spin and the controller is working. So to do this, I'm bridging up the thermal switch to allow current to flow. And as you can see, it all spins and works really well. I'm reinstalling the vent cover and just testing how much airflow there is in this installation. And just for one fan, it's really good. There's a little bit of suction from the bottom vent, but there's definitely air coming out of the top vent. So hopefully this will keep the caravan fridge nice and cool. Right, and there we go, that's it all done. Um, I'm really happy with that. The installation has gone very well. Unfortunately, I can't test it because we're in storage, the everything is off and it's not really hot. Although I think what I might do is come up here with a pack of sandwiches and put the fridge on gas and then that will get that really hot and then it should all burst into life. So I might do that in the coming days. And if I do, I'll put it up on our channel and you can see that working uh, part of the comments section. Um, now, I just want to talk about uh, temperatures. The uh, little control panel switches on at 35 degrees and ramps up to 45 degrees. Um, but obviously the thermal switch switches on at 50 degrees. So you might be asking yourself, when it switches on, the fan's gonna be running at 100% anyway. Well, that's not strictly true. The thermal switch will switch on at 50 uh, because it's connected to the condenser pipe but there's an ambient temperature in the cavity and that's what the thermal probe will be uh, sensing for. Now I have no doubt I might need to adjust that, but where I've put the control panel, I can easily get a little screwdriver in there and just switch around the dip settings uh, so it changes at different speeds. But you know, I'll test that out when it's running in the heat of a summer's day. So that's it installed there. 
Um, the most difficult part of the whole installation, in fact, was just getting it in, getting it around and put it in position. Um, because the sticky backing tape wants to stick to everything, of course, uh, and not the thing that you want it to actually stick to. But I've got it in the right position, situated it in place, no problem at all. So, link to everything is in the description below. Like I said before, there is a blog post which I'm going to write when I get home now on how it all went. Um, the, the full instructions will be on there on how you can do this yourself. Do I think it's a worthy upgrade? Well, based upon my Mark 1 version, absolutely. And I hope that this will be far better. Uh, this design, I think, is going to work really well because it's going to blow straight onto the condenser. Um, it's not going to be at the bottom sucking air in and it's not going to be at the top blowing air out. So it should work really, really well. Right, and that's it from me today. Many thanks for watching. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon, and why not consider becoming a member for exclusive content? So until next time, guys, many thanks for watching. We'll see you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.